Hello and welcome. Could the founding of Israel have been based on a total misunderstanding of history? One Israeli historian has created huge controversy with his findings that the idea of a single Jewish tribe is wrong and that much of the justification for the founding of the Jewish state of Israel is actually political. When the nation of Israel came into existence in 1948, it was the culmination of centuries of dedication by Jewish nationalists to the idea that their people must return to a land from which they'd been exiled almost 2,000 years earlier. But many modern archaeologists and historians have begun to doubt whether or not this event really happened. Other discoveries are shedding new light on key past events of the Jewish people in the Holy Land and creating some uncomfortable dilemmas for those who live there now. So today we ask, do new perspectives on Israel's past require a new vision of its future? Remember, you can join our conversation with your questions and comments. You can send an SMS or email, and we welcome your phone calls on the show as well. Joining me to discuss uh, this from London, his theories and the controversy he's stirring is uh, Shlomo Sand, a professor of contemporary history at Tel Aviv University and author of the book, the Invention of the Jewish People, which was on the bestseller list in Israel for several months and has recently been translated into English. Professor Sand also teaches at the University of California at Berkeley and the Ecole des Hautes Etudes en Sciences Sociales in Paris. Professor Sand, thanks very much for coming on the show. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Sir, I, I have to start off with a quote from your book uh, where you say, or giving the reason why you write it, you say, I could not have gone on living in Israel without writing this book. I don't think books can change the world, but when the world begins to change, it searches for different books. Considering what you've written in this book, you can't be very popular among many Israelis right now, and I, I wonder what difference you, you think you're going to make putting these views forward. What uh, difference will it make to the, the situation in Israel? As I said, I am not sure that uh, books can change the world. But, uh, you know, with this conflict without ending, this conflict, uh, I have a pessimist position, but I thought that it's very important to, to say something about the uh, myth that uh, uh, give birth of the Israeli state and why this myth that helped to create Israel, this same myth can destroy the Israel, you see, this ethnic myth. And this is a part of my book. Well, Professor, you ask your readers to uh, take a clear and unbiased look at Israel to consider your views and the validity of your argument. And I wonder, considering the history and how loaded the history of Israel is and how uh, entrenched people are in their views of how important Israel is to them, uh, how can they look so un in an unbiased way? How can they step back from what they're so conditioned to, to think about? You know, uh, I don't know exactly, but I think that uh, as a historian, I have to put uh, some uh, truth in, uh, in the narrative of the Israeli foundation. In uh, as I, I, I am writing in my book, it's very important to understand. Uh, you spoke before about the exile. You know, uh, everybody in the street in Washington and London or in Jerusalem or Tel Aviv knows that the Jewish were expelled uh, 2,000 years from Palestine or Judah, and they come back after 2,000 years. I think it was a myth, a legend. It's not a historical truth, and I tried to prove it in my book. You see, the, it doesn't uh, change the fact that Israel exists today, but all the justification, the historical justification of the Zionist colonization, I put on question in my book. Professor, your book what has been a... can help today. Right. Well, I was going to say, your book has been a bestseller Sorry? for months. Your, your book has been a bestseller for months in Israel. Uh, what has been the reaction of people? Though obviously, there's many who will buy it out of curiosity, but what, is, what has been the reaction? Are there those who, who see you as a traitor, for example, to the Jewish cause? Yeah. Uh, you see, uh, the Israelis are not uh, in the same view. A lot of young people in Tel Aviv uh, bought the book. It's become a bestseller. A lot of journalists, by the way, uh, in, the, in the TV programs invite me to uh, every program and to s discuss the book. It was a, a very large curiosity. Uh, they were also attacked and, uh, you know, uh, no, uh, not everybody. I, I arrived to an age to, to know that not everybody can love me. But uh, I didn't try to, to, to be loved by everybody. But I it's very interesting. You know, I, I don't think that Israel is real democracy in the sense that it's not a state of it, I, its citizens, but it's a state, a very liberal and open society, uh, not during the wars, but uh, usually, 
in the curiosity and face of my book was very, very large, and this is the reason that it's become a bestseller. It's uh, how people read it, I don't know. I got a lot of letters, you see, uh, very interesting letters about uh, the question, and I think there is a generation today in Israel that uh, don't need uh, historical justification to continue to live in Tel Aviv. It's interesting you said then at the they beginning. Accept mm. It's interesting you say at the beginning of the show, Professor, yeah. that the same myth that created Israel could also destroy it. Now I want to quote from your book where you talk about how Israel may be isolated. Uh, you say, to what extent is Ju uh, to what extent is Jewish Israeli society willing to discard the deeply embedded image of the chosen people and cease isolating itself in the name of a fanciful history or dubious biology and excluding the other? from its midst. Now I wonder if your, if your views on Jewish history do ever become so widely accepted that there is a majority accepting that kind of view, what difference do you think it make, will make in the way Israel moves forward? How do you think your views could change uh, Israel's direction if they were accepted widely? I think that Israel arrived to an age that it can be much more normal and much more democratic. In which sense? Because you see my position in the end of the book not only because the historical analyze, but because of the future of the area. I think it's very important to understand that Israel has to become a society of its citizens, Jewish, Arabs. You know, uh, in the 67 borders, uh, in the Arab world except Israel uh, in the 67 borders, it has to become a normal democratic state. Then I think that we have to liberate ourselves from these ideas that we are a people race, that, uh, you know, come back after 2,000 years. I think it's a myth, as I said before. And I think that Israeli has, has to stop to be a Jewish state and uh, to become an Israeli state of its citizens. And that uh, the Arab citizens in Israel will feel uh, like a Jew is feeling in London or in Washington. This is uh, one of my political dreams, you know that uh, my little book will contribute to change the Israeli society. I just want to put, uh, I want to put two questions we got by email to you. We had many, many emails. In fact, we had more, probably more emails yeah. and responses to this show than we've had in, in many in a long time. Two I will put to you, one from uh, Ali Hassan in Sweden who wrote in saying, the problem with Israel is that it is a fake state. Israel does not have roots in the soil. Because of this reason, it faces a threat to its existence. Israel needs war, not peace, to remain on the world's map. And then another email that came in from Sinan Chetinkaya, or Setinkaya, says, Israel is governed by Zionism, not by a government chosen by people. Zionism will not stop until the dream of greater Israel is built. Who do you feel is really driving that, that dream of a greater Israel? Who's really driving the strong elements of the Zionist movement in this day and age in Israel, Professor? Okay, I want to make it clear, I am uh, very Israeli, but I am not a Zionist. I don't believe that uh, this state has to, be, uh, has to be a Zionist state, a state of the Jewish in the world. I want that it will become, Israel is a fact. Now, uh, about the first uh, question, uh, you know, we have to understand that uh, Israel exists and we have to accept uh, the, the fact that it's a state it's not a fake state. All the states are fake. Uh, you know, the Iraqi state is not less a fake than the Israeli uh, state. <laughs> In, uh, the Jordan state is not less fake than the Israeli state. The Israeli state is a product of uh, Zionist colonization. We have to admit it, you see. We came from, uh, from other places and we, uh, we take the land of uh, Palestine. But it's become a historical fact that uh, in partly we have to accept it. It's not a fake state. In the, uh, the person that uh, wrote in the email, it, it's a fake state. You know, uh, most of the Israelis uh, fight for the existence of this state, that it's not a fake state. Right. Now, I want to change this state. Uh, I don't want to make it a state of all the citizens. And I think that uh, the, the future of Israel in the, in the Middle East depends in this changing of the characteristic of this state. I have to uh, put uh, another I don't email. Know if I yeah. them. Professor, I, well, it's okay. No, I have yeah. to put another email to you, which is an interesting one that came from Michigan here in the USA from Linda Taylor 
who wrote into our Facebook page saying, youth being youth, of course, don't hate each other. But if you are a young adult in Israel, you have to spend time in the military where you learn f real fast to dehumanize people. And I wonder how have you noticed the reaction among young Israelis to your ideas and your research? You know, a lot of people don't like the ideas that I put forward, but there are a lot of other Israelis, not enough in my point of view, but uh, they, they are not, uh, you know, against living with Arabs. Uh, I know, uh, uh, to speak about my students, I have a lot of students in Tel Aviv University that have uh, quite different opinion of the government and of a lot of uh, racists in Israel. I don't I am not sure to, to be optimistic because of it, but you have to understand that uh, the, there are a lot of Israelis, there are Israelis that are not racist like the other one. Uh, I want to live in Israel uh, with Arab citizens, with the Palestinians, uh, you know, I, I am for a Palestinian state uh, besides the Israeli state. And uh, as I say that I, I try to, to make Israel a, a state of its citizens. Uh, with these uh, letters and the emails, I don't understand one thing. Not a fake state, because every state in the world started as a fake, and uh, uh, it was based on myth. Uh, and secondly, I think that, uh, you know, you cannot, you cannot push away the Israelis. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very dangerous to put on question the existence of Israel. Uh, I want to change Israel, and I try to do it with all the means that I have. Professor, uh, we're going to take a very short break. As I go to this break, I want to quote your book again on an I issue you've been talking about. We'll get back to discuss it when I get back. But in your book, when you talk about the ancient records of uh, Jewish people, you say, the ancient Egyptians keep meticulous records of every event, and there is a great deal of documentation about the kingdom's political and military life. Yet there is not a single mention of any children of Israel who lived in Egypt or rebelled against it or emigrated from it at any time. I'm going to ask you about this, uh, this fragility of the expulsion when, uh, when we return. Stay tuned. More of our discussion when we're right back. <laughs>